the, the premier, the management organization to look up to because they uphold the highest standards of excellence. It really focuses on people who are in management as opposed to being investors or owners. That the leadership has been more willing to speak out than the chambers of commerce. It has to be outspoken. You know? Otherwise, it becomes a social club. A very professional organization, not timid about speaking up on the major issues of the day. Many of the traits that uh, a good manager should have are manifest in the way MAP behaves you know, and conducts itself. Management is not all about business, profits, and money. The business of management is about nation building as well, most especially when a country is wrought by crisis. The Management Association of the Philippines was born during a time of rebuilding. Because at that time, the large companies were all managed by foreigners. Ramon de Rosario came to me and said many of the professional managers should have a voice in an organization. Both Ramon and I felt that there are so many talented people here. And we wanted to create a profession of management people in the Philippines. I saw the need for it. So I said, of course, you, I do my best to be part of that group. With more than 700 members nationwide, the Management Association of the Philippines is the country's biggest business organization today. Members of the organization include pillars of the Philippine business community, top management educators, and outstanding government officials. Membership is by invitation only, sent on an individual basis. Let me just say that at the start of the year... For the past six decades, the faces of MAP have remained steadfast in the organization's commitment to promote management excellence in the Philippines. And really the practice of professionalism and management is so important in nation building. And that applies to whether you are in private institution or whether you are in government institution. As a partner of government and civil society, MAP members take part in advocating reforms in our country. The membership are not just run-of-the-mill, they are uh, tycoons, they, are, they could agitate for reforms. They command respect, so I think uh, they should speak out. We should speak out more. I, I, I want to say they because I'm in government also. As an organization, MAP focuses only on issues related to management excellence and good governance. It does not get involved in partisan politics. In accordance with its core values and principles, the group does not endorse its members and other individuals for specific government posts. Still Overwhelmed MAP members, however, offer and provide more than enough models for good governance and development plans. If only people in government and especially in the high echelons of power were to look at the way companies are managed, perhaps they might look at it as a model for them to run government because, let's face it, our government has been run on a short-term basis. We have 11 million people working abroad. And until we're able to raise the standard of living of people, where we're able to get this quagmire of poverty resolved, we're not gonna get anywhere. And yet, our solutions are all short-term. Focus on those activities, those business areas, which have the maximum impact on the welfare of people. We cannot do everything. The medium-term development plan that I've seen is a wish list. It's a thick book of what, 10,000 projects? No president, even if it's Superman or Superwoman, could do that. You have to focus on what it is that you should do. 
MAP has come up with a list of eight key areas that the public and private sector should focus on to achieve inclusive growth. Among these, agriculture and manufacturing must be top priority. And if you develop agriculture and they are in there, then you will have generate more employment for these people. It's basically like that. And of course, when you increase agricultural productivity, price of food will come down. Of course, means everybody will benefit from it because there are most of the poor people are in that sector, in the rural areas. So that's very, very important, agriculture. We don't need to get even foreign investors to go into that. We should have more and more manufacturing and agro-industrial projects in the country so that we can create jobs for these people. MAP, through its various programs, shares best management practices, networks with other business organizations here and abroad, and benchmarks with their counterpart organizations in other countries. It believes that management excellence can be developed this way, but should begin with the right management mindset. I think what this country needs is to have integrity at all levels from the top down. Sometimes the, the problem with government is we have little tyrants in the little desks. What it takes to be a good Filipino manager, you cannot just be a manager. You must as well be an entrepreneur. You must be able to deal with the excitement of the job and the boredom of the job. Uh, you must be able to deal with the numbers and yet deal with emotions. You gotta have a high IQ and a high EQ at the same time. You set the example for all your other management people. You know, you don't have to tell the staff to be on time if you are always late playing golf. No. But if you are here before 8 o'clock or what, then there's no way that you don't have to tell the staff. They'll see, they'll follow the example of leadership. No? Professionalism, integrity, leadership and excellence. This is the heart of the Management Association of the Philippines. It takes more than one company to do this uh, nation-building effort. It takes everybody, be it a company or individual, government or the church. I've always theorized that every Filipino, whether again as a citizen or a corporation or in any entity, were just to do his job properly, then I think it'd be a proper nation.